Tonight's Tuesday night Sim Series brought to you by. Oh, Pearson gets it to the 95 of Folks. Here comes the caution. Flag is dropped here at Daytona in a way. Go for the first time, Nicholas Morsell, Sean. It looks like most get through on skate. Look at that, there's Reed Gibson. A big move at the inside line of Dom's, possibly a little bit of content. Now, as we've got three wide action going through turns one and And they're underway. Eric Hahn takes a nice jump. Wilson hasn't let it go very far. He might go out here for circuit spa, Frank and Sean. Alex Johnson's off to a brilliant start there. See just how oddly shaped this one is. We saw in the background Eric Hahn go for a bit of a swing, and he's gone, and he's over. New stuff. Cody Graham is the one-on-one, -on -one, up into second place. Alex Johnson, six tenths lead at the moment. Mr. Dicey up front, there's Andrew Kessel, Justin Sang. They are ready to go, the lights are out, and away we go for the very first time here at Okayama International Circuit, Finley Fitzsimmons. Welcome back, race fans, to the DRS CCA tonight's event brought to you by the Detroit Region Sports Car Club of America. With over 1,400 members, there is no shortage of knowledge, history, and trailblazing ideas like this Sim League. Thank you, participants and spectators, for being part of the augmentation and evolution of the region. The DRS CCA, of course, goes beyond the virtual realm. In 2024, they will be hosting over 40 events over 60 days that can get you behind the wheel or so close that it will blow your hair back. The gamut of behind-the-wheel events includes road racing, road rally, rally cross, autocross, and a competition driving school. Support for the Detroit Grand Prix, Formula SAE, and Street Survival are also amazing opportunities to help sculpt future and professional drivers. Check out drscca.org for more information. Whitlam Group, your first choice for all your labeling needs. Whitlam Group provides a variety of labeling solutions, including packaging, promotional engineering, brand security, print-on-demand, and custom solutions. Located in Centerline, Michigan, Whitlam has a heart as big as their labeling options. They give back to their community by supporting the Children's Hospital of Michigan, Adopt-A-Child Project, Sweet, Dream Sweet Dreams Projects, Cots Detroit, Animal Welfare Society, and much more. Visit Whitlam.com for details. Superlap. Located on the world-renowned Woodward Avenue of Berkeley, Michigan, Superlap is a sim drive studio, a space to meet and compete. With professional-grade racing simulators, they are a premier racing and drive experience venue. They will help you achieve your motorsports goals with education, practice, and training. Maybe you're familiar with the world's most famous international Formula One series? Well, their best driver is a promoter of sim training and racing, so if Max Verstappen uses a sim, shouldn't you? You can race and practice against an AI roster go head-to-head -head with other humans or both. They also offer league racing much like us here at the DRSCCA League, so go check them out, superlap.world for details. Waterford Hills Road Racing, Metro, Metro Detroit's only permanent sanctioned road course, Waterford Hills, located in Clarkston, Michigan, hosts a six-weekend race series, competition driving school, and nine public open track days. The track is hot from 10 a.m. to 6 p.m. on these event days and is open to the public. A nominal $5 entry fee is all it takes to get you close to the action. Check out waterfordhills.com for details. Also, thank you to our friends over at the Michigan Turn Marshals for their support. If you want to get close to the action, be sure to check out michiganturnmarshals.org. 
They can train you to support races like the Detroit Grand Prix. Finally, a special thanks to all volunteers in the Detroit region and Waterford Hills. Without these volunteers, none of this would be possible. And now it's time, ladies and gentlemen, for today's feature event, the Detroit SCCA Sim Series, bridging the gap between virtual and track racing. We're in Wisconsin for Road America, where we're getting ready to put our spec four drivers out on track. And I've got a couple of guests up in the booth. I'm accompanied by my co-announcer here for the DRSCCA, Nick, as well as world famous Michael Schmidt. Nick, say hello, and then Michael, follow suit. Hello. Hey, James. How's it going? Good, Michael. Good to have you back up here. Good to have both of you up here for tonight's event. Now, Michael, I've been seeing you do a ton behind the scenes in the 129 machine supporting the DRS CCA, but tell us about yourself, where you're from, what's your background, and what makes sim racing just so much fun. Uh, so, born and raised in uh, Redford, Michigan. Um, just really got into sim this past October, just as kind of a training tool for the, the real-life racing I do. Um, head into my fourth season of that. So hoping to see uh, some improvements with it this season. Now, we, we talk about that a lot, and we see it a ton here, especially with our Tuesday and Thursday night series of drivers looking for a little bit of cross-training between sim and real world. What's the big benefit that you're finding with the sim racing that kind of carries over to your real-life shenanigans? Yeah, so I think it's uh, it's the seat time, the free seat time. Just hop in, do you know an hour or two whenever you want. Uh, just get some practice and, and to be able to dissect it and watch the replays. And we got uh, Garage 61 for the data. You can see what everybody else is doing if you're overdriving corners and stuff like that. So it's just a, it's a good learning tool. Yeah, and I, I, like you said, it's it's free compared to a real race car, at least. It's uh, laughably affordable compared to the real-life stuff. I mean, for the price of a track day and tires, you've pretty much got a wheel and pedals and all the content you'll need for iRacing. Yeah, yeah, exactly. It's... Uh... It's great. Real racing, I feel like it's a bit of a wrap that it's really expensive. It's just the first year. After that, it's it's kind of coast. But uh, but yeah, sim racing is a is a great alternative to it as well. Now, is there any tracks that you've ran on sim and in the uh, the real world that seem to translate well? So Mid Ohio is the only other track besides Waterford I've been to, and uh, yeah, it feels pretty real. The one thing you don't get in the sim is the the sense of speed and the G's. So you're kind of missing that, but uh, once you kind of pick up on the visual and audio cues from the uh, from the sim, you know, you kind of your brain tricks you into thinking you're feeling it. Now, Michael, I don't think we've mentioned it so far, but what do you drive when you're going to places such as Waterford or uh, Mid uh, Mid Ohio? Yeah, so I got a uh, Spec Miata One Six uh, Spec Miata. It's a great little car. Uh, have lots of fun in it and lots of fun mid pack battles with the guys there. And Mike, so Michael, how did you get into the real world? We talked about what made you come over to the iRacing side of things, but what got you into track days or really whatever discipline you're into currently? Yeah, so I jumped into the deep end. Uh, I was in the middle of a career switch, and my dad said, I'm going to take you somewhere and you're going to get hooked. Uh, that was Waterford. And uh, that August, I think we went to the June race, and that August we had bought a car and gotten ready for school the next season. So uh, it was trial by fire real quick. Well, it seems like it's worked out well for you. What's some of the big accomplishments that you're proud of, either on the real track or the virtual one? Uh, I'm, I don't have too many accomplishments in the real world yet, having fun learning and uh, and going there. But uh, I'm having a blast with this the series we got going on and pretty pleased with my pace. Kind of at the pointy end of the mid-pack. So, uh, I mean, we got some aliens in these leagues. So pretty pleased with my pace. Finished P6 in last season's championship. Yeah, it seems like here on the Tuesday and Thursday night series, it doesn't matter where you're looking. You're going to have great racing across the track, and everybody seems very invested in constantly improving. And I think a large part of that can be attributed to the uh, the practice sessions. I believe you're the host for multiple practice sessions throughout the week and gives these drivers even more seat time to prepare for these broadcasted events. Yeah, so season one, uh, Russell kind of just threw out a random question after you know week one, just anybody want to host a practice, and it just... It was popular, and, you know, for a buck, you know, I get to see what the fast guys are doing and learn from them right along. Um, and, you know, so it's a cheat code. Yeah, I mean, that with the telemetry, you were talking about Garage 61. It's available in the real-world counterpart, but, I mean, it's basically for free here on iRacing where you can tuck in behind somebody else, study your own telemetry, study theirs, and 
if you do have a bit of an off-track excursion, you just hit a magic button and you're back out on track with uh, no additional expenses. Yeah, no, that's uh, definitely one of the bonuses to sim racing. Now, Nick, do you have any questions for our special guests here tonight? Yeah, Michael, do you have any advice for new iRacers or sim racers uh, since you're a little bit newer yourself? Uh, any advice or tips for those? Uh, yeah, patience is is key, and that's one of the things I'm going to try to carry into the real world as well, is just, um, you know, being patient. You're not going to go out there, you're not going to automatically be a Russell or Ari or um, Elliot. Uh, it's just going to take time, um, you know, learn the car, pick up baby steps. Now, Nick, for tonight's show, where do we need to set up a camera crew? Where's all the excitement and heartbreak going to be at here at Road America? Any of those uh, corners after the long straights, corner five, especially coming into that just over 90 degree left-hander, the kink is always an interesting place to look as well as Canada corner. Anywhere you have those big, long passing zones into a tight corner, that's where the action's gonna be. And Michael, same question. Where do we need to put a camera to capture either something very cool or maybe not so cool with that 129 here tonight? I'm hoping the, the kink, we're going to have some fun in the kink. We were messing around with it in practice, so maybe I can pull something off. It's a sketchy place, but it can be a fun place, too. Well, I'm looking forward to the action tonight. I know Nick is as well. And, Michael, before I let you go and get ready for this feature event, who do you want to give a shout to that's either supporting you in the sim, in the real-world counterpart? The floor is open for you. Any shout-outs you want to throw their way? I'll shout out my uh, my dad. He's my you know crew guy, and I share the car with him. And then uh, shout out the other you know mid pack guys that I'm racing with in this the series: Richard and Jacob and Steven. Uh, you know, it's great battling with these guys. Andrew Gross, uh, who's not here tonight, but uh, having some great battles with those guys. Awesome, Michael. Thank you so much for joining us in the booth during the intermission. Looking forward to another great round of you in that 129. And again, we'll be cheering for you up here in the broadcast booth. Sounds good. Thanks, guys. Thank you, sir. Thank you. And that was Michael Schmidt. Join us number 129 machine. Now, right now, Nick, we are during our intermission, our warm-up session, and some drivers are getting some added seat time just to prepare. And right now, it seems like Russell Soto has the pace for sure, and he wants to make it back-to-back -back wins so far this season. Russell Soto's coming out uh, swinging. Uh, interesting thing I noticed looking at the points is that the top two folks in the points, Robert Crucera and Russell Soto, have not been able to face each other in the last two races. So I'm excited to see them going head-to-head -head here in a race again. Yeah, that's going to be exciting. The 177, he's out on track with Crucera. We'll get the uh, qualifying results pulled up on our screen here as well for the fans at home to see where your favorite driver was able to bring it home at. It was Soto in that top spot. And right Soto behind him. Go ahead. Soto absolutely dominating, too, with a qualifying time of almost a second ahead of Ari. Yeah, Ari Ryder qualifying second. Mike Newton third. Kusera, that's who we're keeping an eye on and talking about. Qualified fourth. And then Ryan Carwile, the number 71, seems to always do well at the draft pack track. So I'm interested to see how this is going to go at Road America and maybe see if we have another five-car breakaway like we did last week. Absolutely. Mike Knudsen is a bit of a new entity to that top of the grid, uh, you know, position. So I'm really curious to see how he can hang with uh, Kusera and Soto. Yeah, Newton kind of hanging out on pit road as we've got about 55 seconds left in, left in qualifying. Now, Nick, do you have a, uh, a driver that you're putting your support behind that you think is going to do exceptionally well? Or maybe we'll see as our hard charger here tonight? I'm sticking with Soto. He got that win at Belle Isle. Uh, I think he's super calm under pressure. He's really able to handle uh, the fast guys behind him, and I think Russell's my guy tonight. I'm going to be looking at Richard Shive in the 79 machine. Richard's been getting faster and faster. Got his first podium last week. I think he's starting to get some momentum built up, and we also have some fans join us. It looks like we've got Pneumatic join us in the spectator area. We've got Andrew Herschel join us inside the broadcast, so... Unfortunately, Herschel's not going to be out on track, but hey, still join in where he can support his favorite drivers, his at least second or third favorite broadcasters, and looks to be about a 20-car grid here tonight, Nick. Looking like a good group of people tonight. It's going to be a good race. Yeah, I'm excited to see how this one goes as we get ready.
And looks like it is time to get this party started. I'm going to run through the order here for Road America on pole. Russell Soto, R.E. Ryder starting second. Mike Newton starting third. Robert Cusera starts fourth. Ryan Carwile starting fifth. Trent McMillian starting sixth. Michael Schmidt starts seventh. Bob Cusera starting eighth. Christian Correa starting ninth. Dominic Bates starting 10th. Richard Scheib starts 11th. Jacob Mowitz starting 12th. Let's cycle it on back. We've got Andrew Mowitz starting 13th. Jason Williams starts 14th. Matthew Malone starting 15th. William Lamb starts 16th. Stephen Kahn starting 17th. And David Grzynski will start 18th and round out our field here today. Now it is going to be a long lap of eye pacing here at Road America. Very tedious here at Road America. Yeah, if a fast lap was 227 set by Soto, we might have to get out the old um, old wind-up clocks, the sundials, to measure this one. It could very well be a four-minute lap here. Definitely could be. I'm uh, excited to see how the drivers handle the draft today. Um, kind of going back to VIR and some of those uh, faster courses with the long straights, I think we're going to see some interesting draft uh, strategies going on. Yeah, this is very much a draft-dependent, momentum-dependent raceway we're on. If, from what we've seen in the past, such as tracks like Road Atlanta, historically the guys would try and get linked up four or five drivers and just kind of hammer down, separate themselves from the rest of the field. And it's about the midway point we start seeing that pack start to break apart as there's mistakes out on course and drivers run into a little bit of attrition now it's an only 30 minute feature event here tonight and no scheduled pit stop so if you see a driver come down pit road it means they have some sort of mechanical some sort of problem as we're expecting everybody to try and stay out the entire time here nerves building before that pace car heads in as they go up the straight. Still got about half a lap to go here. Yeah, I'm going to be interested to see. I mean, Soto and Ryder on that front row. I think it's going to be a drag race and a battle of the braking into turn one, but it's going to be a lot of drivers right behind, I think, that are going to try and make some moves early on. And we always say you can't win it on lap one, but you can sure get yourself in a better position. But you definitely don't want to be the driver that loses it on lap one as we are only halfway through the pacing lap here at Road America. And a long time to kind of plan things out for these drivers. As you were saying, gives you time to build up the nerves and get ready for tonight's showdown. Absolutely, and it's a lot of it's up to Russell. He controls the pack when that pace car goes in. He decides when you go. Yeah, I think Soto's going to try and get on the gas as quickly as he possibly can here, but I'm curious to see what Ryder's going to try and pull. That first corner, man, anytime you got that high-speed straight like that and whoever doesn't get quite the run is going to hop in the draft to the other and they're going to be right on top of each other going into corner one. Yeah, I agree. I think that's going to be pretty well decided by the time they cross the start and finish line. They'll know who has the better launch and then tuck in right behind right after that. But a quarter of a lap left here and then we're going to fire these guys off. And very impressed. 18 drivers coming out tonight. Ah, so that's Andrew Gross joining us in the spectator area. So good to see Gross, especially Gross, joining the, uh, us in the broadcast. The bummer we're not seeing the student driver back 69 out on track. But again, always cool having the racers showing up and still, still lending their support. A great group of people here at the Detroit Region SCCA. Very supportive, very uh, invested in the region. And yeah, great to have everybody out. Now, here we go as we get ready for that iRacing safety car to come down pit road. The field is set, Pace gridded up nice in. and double file. Soda holding him back. When's he going to go? I think he's going to wait till right as he crests the hill. Well, I was mistaken. I was thinking he was going to try and launch as soon as his car was 
slightly downhill, but here we go. The green and flag is out. Go. Soto has a good launch to the inside line, Ooh. but Ryder's going to get a push here towards the front. Looks like Carwile didn't quite have the launch he was looking for in the 71, loses a spot early on, and here's the battle of the breaking side by side. And that right there is why first place gets the inside. Yeah, no doubt. And already Ooh. we're looking at some three wide action three wide. there. They sorted it out by the time they got to the corner, though. Yeah, that was Newton Carwile and I believe possibly Schmidt in the 129 machine. So the top three, top four drivers linked up nose to tail. Newcomer Correa in the 226 is going to go side by side with Michael Schmidt. But up front, Ryder challenging for the lead here. Going to try and get set up on the outside line. Soto's going to dive deep on the brakes. And there's Kusera. We talked about him. We haven't got to see Kusera and Soto battle too much here this season as a couple drivers are cutting through the grass Ooh. there. Tight, tight racing in this first lap. Yeah, you cannot afford a single mistake here at Rota America. You will very quickly find a freight train of drivers going right behind. I mean, look at that beautiful shot. The entire field knows the tail here in Wisconsin. Trenton McMillan up two places uh, into fourth place. Looking good for Trenton. Going around the carousel. Here comes the kink. Now this is what I'm excited about here. Everybody wide open. The number 16 of Trent McMillian goes Ooh. off track, able to hold on to it. Looks like Dominic Bates and Jason Williams also went off track to the kink. And something that's happening right there, Nick, is drivers have been used to running open laps with clean air on the hood of these spec forward racers. But when you're in a very, very heavy draft, they can kind of pull you into the corner five, six miles an hour than you've been running in the past. And very easy to push a little bit wide and go off track there if you're coming in faster than expected. That's a good point. That's going to be a very interesting aspect for these drivers to adapt to on uh, in this tight racing. We're on board with Trenton McMillian's number 16 machine. Up two spots, currently into fourth. Looks like everybody seems to be content here, running nose to tail. Trenton with the run. I think he led off there. Yeah, I think I think Ryder, Kusera, and McMillian all lift a little bit there. Burping the throttle into turn one, not wanting to push the issue too far. I think these top four really want to break away from Newtson, Carwile, and Correa running Lane fifth, sixth, and seventh. That second pack might be able to catch the draft here of the field in front. And a little bit further back, Dominic Bates, Bob Kusera side by side. Right behind them, that's Michael Schmidt, Richard Scheib. Schmidt did not get the launch that he was looking for. Down three spots from where he started. And, oh, it is a busy racetrack here. Ooh. Oh, little touch. Oh. The Cusera oh. way wide. Bob Cusera. Now, it's interesting Jeez. for this battle for eighth place back. We're seeing a lot of side-by-side -side action, elbows out. But the top six drivers have all linked up nose to tail and are not currently hopping out of formation. I mean, that's what Michael Schmidt, the 129 machine, he's second in line in this pack. He said, hey, I'm here to battle it out with the mid-pack heroes. And these guys always put on a show. I mean, and we said in the interview, wherever we point a camera, we can find racing. Ooh, As man, right Shai was all in the back of Michael Schmidt. He's already tried to draft. And that's six, almost six and a half seconds uh, separating seventh and eighth place right now. That front of the pack really taking off here. Don't know if Dominic Bates is holding everybody up or uh, what's going on there. Or they just spent so much time battling back and forth, I think. There's Ryan Corwile grabbing a spot against Mike Knudsen. Both Kusera, Malone. Oh, we've got a, tra a crash reported. It looks oh, like that's going to be Kusera and Matthew Malone, both tied up in that. We're going to get the replay queued up, see what happened there. We're focusing on Kusera's number 13 machine. Grabs a little bit of grass, comes back oh. over. And Kusera Malone. Malone 
Didn't realize he was there and went into him, yeah. Unfortunately, that's going to result in Malone taking a tow back down pit road. So hopefully he can get back out on track with 25 minutes left. But his race effectively over. There's the top four, Soto, Ryder, Kucera. But it was actually Ryan Carwile in fifth. Just at the fastest lap of the race on 120.7. That is on par with what Soto was able to click off in qualifying. So drivers have definitely found the pace. And with how heavy the draft is... They are absolutely ripping around here at Road America. They are using every inch of that track. Yeah, and then some. Ryan Carwile, fifth place, fastest lap. Now, Ryan Carwile's historically done well in draft-heavy packs. We can keep the, uh, the nose clean, literally and figuratively, of that number 71 machine. We've actually seen Carwile in seasons past bump draft so aggressively, he damaged the front bodywork on his car. So I think he quickly learned after that one. And I mean, you can tell with that fastest lap of the race, he's just kind of hanging out here trying to put himself in a good spot. And we've seen Carwile do that before, wait till the end of the race and then try and make a big lunge up towards the front. Carwile definitely plays the long game. He knows he's got to stay close to the front. He doesn't need to be too aggressive too early on. But near the end of the race, he gets those uh, he gets those claws out. Oh, I just heard somebody. Andrew Moed had a bit of a moment there. That number 14 machine. I heard the tires squealing in protest. Just overcooked it on the Ooh. brakes. Thankfully... Kept it pointing the right direction, so he's going to lose a fistful of seconds there, but still not out of it. And still that battle for eighth is heating up. There's Michael Schmidt, Richard Scheib, Dominic Bates, eighth, ninth, and tenth. They have shaken off Jacob Mowat after his incident, but they are about almost five seconds back from Christian Correa. And that 226 kind of out there in no man's land. He is four seconds up of this battle for eighth, 2.6 seconds back from sixth place. So he's getting a glorified track day here at Road America. He's broken away uh, a little bit. I'm curious to see if that uh, eighth place and backpack is going to catch up to him or what happens. Yeah, I think for Ooh. that, Schmidt, Shive, and Bates need to link up nose to tail and just work on getting some momentum built up. You can see Trent McMillian in fourth, hanging back just a couple of car links there from Kusera. Ryan Carwile still in tow, and... I'm going to see Mike Knudsen sitting in six, the 383 machine. There's Knudsen just outside the draft. You can also see Christian Correa. They're just hoping for a little bit of mistake here with that lead pack, and suddenly they can find themselves back in a podium contention as Soto continues the charge here at Road America, but he is having no luck breaking away as Ryder takes a peek to the inside line, hops right back in line, and looks like he's going to be content following along for a little bit here. The discipline these guys have going into these big braking zones is super impressive. Yeah, very reminiscent of uh, Road Atlanta earlier this year where we had three, four drivers to stay linked up nose to tail. It was about the 12 minute mark at Road Atlanta where everything kind of broke loose and drivers just started going for it. Now, if you were in their shoes right now, what what lap, what time on the board do you think we're going to start seeing some challenges against Soto up here? Oh, there goes Ryder. Oh, and he lost a place. Couple places. Yeah, a few. He's going to drop back to fifth here. Ryder to the back of the pack. Yeah. No, and it, it's just like that. It's it's why I back Russell the way I do. That man, has, he's got to be looking in his rearview mirrors almost the whole race, and yet he still keeps putting in these fast laps. Russell, that's what you got to do. You've got to drive. you got to drive aggressively, and you got to not make mistakes. I'm yeah, thinking... You know, 15, 20 minutes in, kind of similar to how, what we saw in uh, uh, Road Atlanta there. I, I think we're going to start to see some action. Yeah, I think so as well. If Unless we start to see some mistakes out the front, like what happened with Ryder in that 27, I think Soda's probably in the best spot here. He's got clean air to the front of the number 50 machine. Nobody's really tried to stick a nose in and challenge him under the braking, so hasn't been forced into the vortex of danger actually gaining about a half second of the rest of the field but with the draft here the start finish line stretch i think everybody's going to close back up but something has happened to Ryder. he's losing the draft here and he's going to lose 
almost a half second, I think, by the time the rest of the field's in turn one. He's falling quite a bit back. I'm showing it. Yeah, second and a half now. Oh, and that look at that. here is powerful. Kusera, Ooh. listening to the broadcast, takes a lunge for the lead. The inside line against Soto. Soto carries a little bit more speed. Kusera hops back in line, not wanting McMillian or Carwile to take over that second place spot. But I think that is indicative of what's to come here, Road America. Absolutely. Kusera with the fastest uh, previous lap as well. He had about a tenth of a second on Russell. Now here we go, some old school draft battles. Kusera hops out of line, McMillian ooh, tucks ooh. in behind. Oh, ooh, there's not ooh. a lot of real estate there. Ryan Carwell seems to be content watching this one unfold down to the hill. Oh, lots Russell of car control him there. Just a little. Nice conservative line through uh, corner five there. Still side by side for the race lead. Kusera is going to take it over here, trying Trend. to get his first lap led. And as you say, McMillian trying to seize the opportunity oh, here. He was he had his nose up in there for a little bit. Russell was able to grab it back, but McMillian is right there. And that's going to give some time back to uh, Ori Ryder as well, sitting in fifth. He was almost a second and a half back from the lead pack. Now, all of a sudden, just about eight, nine tenths off the back of Ryan Carwile. Oh, something has happened. Richard Scheib. He's going to have an off-track excursion. What was a great battle for eighth. Let's see what happens here for the number 79. Uh, just misses the mark there. What a that good corner save. Eight, that corner eight is such a deceptive corner. You're kind of coming downhill. You've just come out of corner seven, which is a high-speed sweeper. And you've really got to nail that marker. Oftentimes, if you push it back any at all, you're going to be in trouble. Soto trying to Soto. deny Kusera the lap led here. Soto is a racer Soto through get and back through. Around? Uh, through the uh, the back section after the kink, he made it happen under braking, but right into Canada corner and just set himself up for the best line possible. So let's see. I'm interested to see does Kusera. He's going to stay glued Whoa. behind that number 50 machine. I'm, I'm looking to see. If he shows any cards here, does he try and pull out of the draft right at the start finish line and maybe test something out for late in the race? But for this lap, he's going to stay tucked in by there he goes. goes McMillan to the outside. Him. And look at that. There's Ryder. He's back in this mix. Woo. Russell Soto knew at the beginning of that straight, he took the inside line. He said, listen, I'm parking my car right here. Oh, and Kusera with the lead. Yeah, Kusera taking up the line. inside line. McMillian still hunting for an opening against Soto, but not quite able to get it as we're going to go three wide. McMillian, oh. Ryder, Carwile. Is Russell going to give him the little bump and then he pop out? A little shake and bake? That's a little. It looks like everybody's going to stay or get formed back up single file. Lucera still holding on to it. I heard a little bit of body work being rustled around there. No pun intended for Soto, who sits in second. Kusera up by three tenths. And we still have a great battle going on for eighth. Dominic Bates. Oh, it Bates looked like a massive move under breaking. Sent it a little bit too hard there as Scheib and Ooh. Schmidt move back up into eighth and ninth. Dominic Bates back to tenth. But, I mean, I don't think that battle's going to cool off at all. I think they're going to be another pack that we see all the way to the finish line if they can keep it on track with clean cars and put on some great racing. And we're not even halfway through this race. Almost uh, 16 minutes left here, and the uh, action is already heating up. Yeah, this is going to be good, and especially with no pit stops on the board for these drivers, it is going to be wide open racing for all of 30 minutes here. Now let's see, does Soto try and pass back in the same spot he did the lap prior, or is he going to be content following Casera into Canada Corner? Not seeing a lunge yet out of Soto. I think he's going to stay formed up. As Ryder has moved back up into third, McMillian in fourth, Ryan Carwile in fifth. And let's see, this could be Kusera's first lap led of the night here. Kusera looking really solid, might have gained a little bit, bit of momentum here on Soto. Yeah, we haven't seen anybody hop out of line before the start finish line, opting to carry as much pace as possible all the way down the stretch into turn one. Now, I think once we're on the white flag and drivers are approaching the checker, if they're still grouped up like this, I think we're going to see some really good old-fashioned bump drafting. And 
it, the race could be decided from drivers who are third and fourth if they give a push to anybody if they're side by side coming up the hill. Ooh, Ari thinking about dipping in there going uh, three deep on the bump draft. Yeah, the old adage, don't push the pusher. Normally we uh, say that during the oval races I announce for it. Not often I get to say that during road courses as the top five still linked up. A uh, one second separating Robert Cousera in first. Oh, and a big moment oh. there. And that's a reminder the to these up. drivers. A reminder to these drivers, you've got to keep an eye on your marks. If you focus too much on that car ahead, you're going to get in trouble. Oh, looks like Cousera had a bad exit out of turn one. Yeah, that bit of a moment that's going to give Soto the line here on the inside. Ryder tries to follow suit, but does Cassara carry a little bit more pace up the... Oh! No, it looks like it's going to be Ryder oh, on the inside. Oh, making oh, a clean pass for a second. Ryder pushing hard. So that's going to give Soto four-tenths of an advantage back to him. Still the top five all bunched up here. And I kind of like the drafting we're seeing here tonight. Gives drivers a chance to be racing through the more technical side of the track encourages drivers to maybe try something knowing that if they do have a bobble there's a lot of fast wide open sections where that draft is going to link everybody back up i mean Ryder and kusera had that wheel to wheel action they lost about a half second to russell soto but i think they know they're going to reel back in the number 50 here if they just stay in line for a, a few corners yeah absolutely they, they see what's happening they know that they can get their elbows out a little bit and make some movement happen. And I think the more passing that happens, the more chaos that happens here in the front, the more it takes out of these drivers and it kind of throws them off and sets them up to make little mistakes here and there. I, I, I'm, I'm really enjoying this racing. Yeah, this is really good. And, and this is a very skill oriented machine and it's very much a momentum car. So, you know, if we're on a real tight track, if you have a big bobble, on a smaller technical track, it can take, you know, a half lap to fully get back up to pace. Road America seems like we're not having that issue as much, but we have another incident reported. Unfortunately, it's going to be Bob Kusera, who's going to result into a toe into pit row, but we're going to uh -oh. check back up front first before we grab that replay. Already taking yeah. the lead down the main straight. Oh, and Soto pushes wide there. So Soto has a bit of an off track. And let's see, let's grab a quick replay of what happened to Bob Kusera that's gonna result in that number 13 machine taking it. So you can already see the damage on the front end of that car. Oh. oh. And I think he's got suspension damage there that just sent the car around. That car is beat. Here we go, Soto's gonna challenge back to the inside line against Ryder. Kusera back in third. Oh, and there is Soto is going to come out on top. Ryder and Kusera side by side. Trent McMillian, Ryan Carwile fourth and fifth. Very content to watch this one unfold and wanted to make sure they've got a clean car at the end of this thing. And we are past the halfway mark. Less than 12 minutes left to go in the feature event and still great racing across the track. You've got your top five on screen. You can throw a blanket over. You've got newcomer Christian Correa and Mike Newton running 6th and 7th nose to tail. And then you've got that ever-continuously going battle for 8th. Richard Scheib, Michael Schmidt, Dominic Bates, 8th, 9th, and 10th. I mean, this is probably some of the most diverse racing we've had all season, I think. Absolutely, especially looking at the top here. Uh, again, they're usually pretty strategic in the beginning of the race. They wait till a little bit later, try to build a lead. They built up 8.2 seconds over seventh place already, and they're having their fun with it. They're they're fighting for the lead. Yeah, Soto trying to make it back-to-back -back wins here. The DRS CCA Tuesday night series. I could just see the tail end of this uh, This snake was McMillian and Carwile pushing a little bit wide there. And it looked like Kusera just grabbed a ton of curbing in the 177. We talked about these are momentum cars. You can't really afford that big of a mistake, and especially in those final two corners. I mean, it's so important to get a fantastic run down the start finish line. Otherwise, everybody's just going to blow right past you. Looks like Kusera was able to hold on to it here. And 
Here we go. He's closing up on Soto. Are we going to see a battle for the lead once more to turn one? He's running out of room. Nope. He's keeping it tucked in. I think he's got his mind on the exit out of corner three there, that next long straightaway. Going to try to keep it real close and see if he can't make a move going into corner five. Yeah, and I almost wonder, does Kusera not want to be leading quite yet? If he can wait until the last lap to show his cards, but doesn't want to show them too late either. You've got Ryder, McMillian, and Carwile just looking for any sign of a mistake up front. And then we're going to have drivers battling to either improve their podium position or maybe even try and sneak a win here. As it looks like, Nick, they're going to stay single file once more. Ryder taking a peek at the outside line of Kusera, but that might just be looking for some clean air and making sure he hits his marks. And like you were saying, any of these top five, we saw it at... Um, oof. We saw it at VIR there earlier in the season where the top three were took off from the top of the field, and they did a complete reversal there at the end of the race on the, the last lap. So it, it could be any of these five drivers that takes the win. Yeah, I agree. Any of the top five still has a massive chance of a win, and I wouldn't discount anybody, you know, six place back like Christian Correa, that 226. I wouldn't discount a possible podium. We've seen it before here at the DRS CCA Virtual Series. Drivers get a little bit aggressive towards the end. They can take out some podium contenders, and you got a dark horse such as Richard Scheib. The 79 picked up his first podium last week at Belle Isle, sneaking on in there, keeping his car clean and avoiding the carnage. And I mean, really, I think anybody in the top 10, I would not discount from a possible podium. Just over eight minutes left to go, and like you say, anything can happen. Soto continues the charge out front. Kusera tucked in behind. Ryder sitting in third. Let's go a little bit further back. Richard Scheib, Michael Schmidt. Still nose to tail in eighth. They've shaken off Dominic Bates, who had an off track on this lap. But Scheib and Schmidt back by about four seconds from Mike Knudsen sitting in seventh. Newton trying to catch up to the Brazilian back 226. And I could watch these guys race all day. Yeah, this is just fantastic. And I guarantee you they're having as much fun driving as we are calling the action. Ryder giving a hearty shove to Casera there. Backs off a little bit, giving himself plenty of breaking distance into turn one. McMillian and Carwile still tucked in behind. Looked like that was McMillian with a little bit of a dirt kick up there, pushing the corner a little bit wider than he planned on. Just a kiss. Oh, he does it again. Oh, oh Trenton way out there. I'm not sure if maybe McMillian's Ryan. tire is starting to fall off, but I think Ryan, I think Carwile is going to try and make a move here. Run. Absolutely. Oh, he's running no, out of he's space, though. Him. He's close. Oh. No, he's using McMillian to close that gap up to the top three again. Carwile completely just pushing him down that section of raceway. And it seemed like it worked. Once again, the top five all bunched up together as Soto leads us up the hill. The hill. Only 1.3 seconds separating Ryan Carwile in fifth from Soto. I'm very interested to see what Carwile does in the remaining six and so odd minutes here. He, he's very good in the draft. I mean, he's a great driver all the way around, but it definitely seems like that 71 biding his time and just doing whatever he can for McMillian and himself to stay with the pack, but doesn't seem to be in a hurry to get around McMillian. I think he's had the opportunity a couple times and just seems to be happy following along here. He knows that as these laps tick away, the chaos is only going to increase, and Ryan Carwile is an expert at taking advantage of the chaos. Yeah, I, I mean, I'm sure he's going to close the gap here whenever he feels the time is right, but he's six tenths back behind the uh, top three as he's tucked in behind McMillian. You've got to be close enough to make a move at the end, but not too close. You're involved in any sort of incidents that might happen up here because the top three, six tenths up over the rest of the field now. McMillian and Carwell have to be extremely careful not to lose the draft for these drivers or the chance of a win is going to be thrown out the window.
almost five minutes left to go in this race. Now, quick shout out to Superlap. I am super excited for next week's race. Hoping to be in person with a lot of these folks at Superlap. And I think that's going to be a fantastic event. So a reminder to everybody about watching. Uh, feel free to show up to Superlap. Yeah, Superlap.world. They'll have all the details posted on their website as well as their social pages. Soto and Ryder are going to go at it here. Cusero looking to capitalize. And that is good news for McMillian and Carlisle. They actually lost a tenth of a second on the start finish line. Not quite in the draft of the top three. And now that we've got some side-by-side -side racing going on, things are going to get heated up here as we are two rows wide Ooh. and two deep. And Carlisle trying to find a dance partner here with the draft as we're going to barrel down the hill. Russell keeping that inside line, knows how to defend. Ari sneaking up the inside. Ryder back up into second, Cusera in third. McMillian and sticks his nose in against Cusero, looking to grab that podium spot. Cusero, a little bit of a bobble there, dipping the tires in the dirt. Luckily for him, he pushed wide and accidentally blocked the, uh, the line that McMillian was going for. So I think we have our answer with four last four less than four minutes left to go here, Road America. The gloves are off, and we've got some racing to do. They are fighting. Kusera down in third is not going to be happy with that, and he's going to be charging hard. Soto still seem to be very content up front. Wanting, hoping for a bit of a breakaway. I don't think Soto is going to get one unless there's a big incident. I think these drivers are going to work together to track back down the 50. But Soto's led just about every lap here at Road America. Wants to lead the most important one. But that is four very capable drivers tucked in behind that number 50 machine. All looking to get a piece of them here. Slight gap kind of grown between the top three. I'm curious to see if they'll uh, sync back up going down the main straight, get their dance partners going. Yeah, this Russell is going to be tough. A, if uh, if Soto, Ryder, and Casera, I think you linked up here, Nick. They might be able to shake off Carwile and McMillian. McMillian's fallen pretty far back after he had a pretty big off track. He's well out of the draft, but now Ryder oh. and Soto side by side. That could Hurry be the, the opportunity Casera was looking for. As Carwile and McMillian over a second back from the he top three car. now. Ooh, ooh. Now R. Ooh. Oh, Russell with a good run, though. Russell not giving up yet. Yeah, Ari pushed a little bit wide, dipped some tires in the dirt, lost the momentum. Soto looks at that opportunity, takes it back in his favor. Now keep an eye out. There is Robert Cusera in the 177 sitting in third. Carwile's three quarters of a second back from the rest of these drivers here. And we have barely, you can see Trent McMillian in the top right corner of your screen. He really needs a mistake out of these top three drivers now if he wants a chance of a podium, much less a win. Absolutely. He's back almost two seconds now. I think he had a bad exit out of three coming down that straight. It looks, looks like the top four are gonna cruise away. Minute and a half to go in this race. Russell keeps managing to get back into first. He is defending like a lion. Yeah, wasting no time to retake what he thinks is his spot. I mean, the number 50 machine qualified on second, but Ryder also, excuse me, Soto qualified in first. Ryder in second, qualified in second. I heard some tires chirp, and I think that was McMillian. And I think what we're seeing from McMillian right now is now that he's lost the top four drivers, who have been equally paced. Oh, I just saw some debris kick off the track. But so these drivers that have been so equally paced, and now that you've lost the draft, you're trying to find some more time. But when everybody's kind of already at the limit, you just tend to overdrive the car and things get a little bit complicated. So right now, McMillian needs to stay the course. And I think this is going to be our white flag lap. I don't think we're going to hit the start finish line before the checkered is thrown at the 30 minute mark. Ooh, it's going to be close. Coming through Canada Corner, 30 seconds to go. I think they're gonna make it before the uh, before the 30 minute mark. Yeah, I think so as well as they charge through the final chicane and they're gonna be coming up the hill. A tenth of a lap left here. Now a little bit of report, Mike Newton has caught up and is battling with the 226 of Korea. 
And yes, we're going to be one more lap to go. This is going to be the white flag lap as Soto and Ryder side by side here for the lead. This is where it's all going to come down to. You can see Barney, our flagman in the background. The white flag is out here. Side by side, here we go. You've got Soto, Ryder, Kusera, and Carwile all in this pack. And we're about to sort this thing out for the last time here tonight. Russell trying to go for back-to-back -back wins, and he's looking very solid. Wasn't quite able to defend the inside line. D doesn't look like it mattered, though. Ooh, he was out there. Kusera now up into second. Ryder falls back to third, giving a hearty shove to Kusera. No, that's Ryan Carwile giving a shove to uh, Ryder. Oh, it's Ooh. about to be a battle on the brakes here. They know this is it. Oh. Ryder tries the long way around. Oh. Soto's going to guard the inside right behind them. Kusera's on the now right hand side of your screen with Carwile on the left, still side by side. Kusera showing up into second now, and just like that, Ryder shuffled back into third. Ryan still sitting there, ready to pounce. Soto pulls about almost a full seven tenths over the rest of the field. I think that's going to be taken away as they make their way through their carousel. If Kusera, Ryder, and Carwile stay linked up here, if they continue battling for second or third, that could give the Soto he's been desperately looking for all night long. Carwile extends the track limits there in the 71 machine, trying to carry as much speed as possible. Doesn't even lift through the draft. Here we go through the back section for the final time. Soto a it. half second up over the rest of the field, but everybody is closing mighty quickly here. And all it takes is one mistake from Soto. Still just shy of a half second advantage to Soto. Is anybody close enough? Kusera and Ritter linked up nose to tail second and third. Ritter has to be careful if he makes a move at the wrong time. That's going to give third place to Ryan Carwile. We head up the hill here for the final time of Road America. I think Soto's got it here. He's three tenths up. Soto with back to back wins. And, and what there a great it is. race. That was clean racing all the way to the end where it was Soto, Kusera, and Ryder, your top three. Ron Carwile is going to miss out on the podium. And McMillian will round out the top five. But man, Nick, that was fantastic. And most importantly, clean racing. Those top five were fighting hard the entire race. Shout out to Trenton for keeping up with them. I know in past races he'd been a, a few places down, but he really hung with the big dogs on this race. Yeah, that was a lot of fun. Interesting note, I'm looking at the off-tracks here. Shout out to Ryan Carwile. Only one off-track in the entire race. The rest of the field was really taking advantage of those curbs. But uh, Ryan kept it clean and uh, ended up in fourth there. Yeah, and at Road America, that is quite the accomplishment. I mean, drivers in practice were grumbling about off-track shenanigans. So good to see that they were able to uh, keep it clean here tonight and not use those off-tracks unless you really needed it. Absolutely. So we're going to get our podium drivers up here into victory lane. First up, we've got Mr. R.E. Ryder. Nailed it that time. R.E., welcome to the top three. And, man, what a great, clean race you guys are able to put on here at Road America. Oh, yeah, it was really fun. Uh, my heart's going like 180 beats a minute. <laughs> All right. We, we noticed a lot of drafting there, a lot of joining up with uh, everybody everybody in the top five. I think at one point or another, almost all of you were in the lead. How What was going through your minds as you were going down those long straights and trying to figure out how to, how to best take advantage of the draft? Oh, it was definitely a big tactical race. I was like, every straight I was thinking, should I pass them now? Should I hold up and let the draft train continue for a while longer? But uh, I didn't have to do much looking in my mirrors, I feel like. Uh, once I got back past, I almost lost it there for a second. I almost lost the draft. But once I got back by, I feel like it was uh, it was the three of us. Well, Absolutely. All right, super cool to have you back up here in the top three. I mean, back-to-back -back podiums for you in that 27 machine. Again, really cool having you back up here. Before I let you go and celebrate with the rest of the DRS CCA hooligans, who do you want to give a shout-out to that helps put you up here in victory lane? 
uh, just everyone who puts the league on again. I know these uh, these call outs get repetitive, but uh, yeah, it's, uh, Soto, Schmidt, Delatore, all the guys who put on practices and run things, uh, and our our steward, <coughs> Mister Chaken, and then just uh, my family and everyone who helps me in real life keep the cars running. Sorry, I'm stuttering a little bit. That was just uh, wow, that was a good one. Awesome. All right, super cool having you back up here, man. Glad things going your way, putting on a great show and great spirits. A pleasure having you as always, and hopefully we'll have you back up here next week as well. Yeah, thanks a lot, guys. I hope so, too. Thank you, yeah. sir. That was Mr. Ari Ryder bringing it home in the third place spot. Up next, we've got Mr. Robert Cusera. Rob, I mean, that was a roller coaster of a night. You were up front. You were battling for fourth and fifth. And then at the very end, it was kind of a uh, bit of a standoff there trying to see what the draft was going to do with, uh, be between all of you guys. Yeah, that uh, that whole race was pretty wild. It was like a chess match the entire time. I knew I didn't really want to be leading on the last lap, so I was hoping I could maybe close the gap on Russell in the last few turns. But unfortunately, I wasn't, make it, wasn't able to make it happen. But overall, it was a, it was a blast of a race. Yeah, no, watching you guys battle out that entire race was a great time. And that you basically answered my question, but uh, we could see the chess match going on and you in the lead and whether to get out behind him or not. And how did you how did you keep your patience uh, sitting there behind him? Yeah, my I, th I think the biggest thing I was trying to do was just make sure I hit my marks even following closely. So. I was just making sure I was watching my mirrors. It wasn't coming over on anyone and just wanted to keep myself alive while also trying to maybe do battle a little bit here and there. Um, so, yeah, biggest thing, I think, mostly was just survival and making sure I was sticking in the draft the whole race. Well, Rob, always a super cool time talking to you. Great to see that number 177 up front in the mix more and more consistently. And before I let you go and unwind from a very grueling race, who do you want to give a shout to that helps make it happen here tonight? Yeah, I want to thank, uh, first off, you guys for streaming this and putting on this awesome broadcast. And I want to thank the Detroit Region SCCA for making this event happen. Again, these Tuesday nights beat pretty much all other Tuesday nights. So uh, I'm glad to be here, and I look forward to racing more with you guys. Awesome. Robert, always a pleasure, and we hope to have you back up here next week. Yeah, thank you, thank you. See you guys next week. Yes, sir. See you, Rob. That was Robert Cusera bringing it home in second. But up next... A man that needs no introduction, but he's going to get one anyway. Welcome back, Russell Soto, making it back-to-back -back here in the Tuesday night DRS CCA Virtual Racing League. Yeah, James, Nick, it's honestly great to be back up here again. I mean, I couldn't be happier. That was a really intense, tough race. Uh, kudos to P2 and P3 for putting on a great battle, you know, Aaron, Dan, Robert. Russell, you kept your freaking cool during that race a master of defending the inside line, and you almost always managed to come out in front. What was going through your minds, uh, what was going through your mind on those uh, occasions where one of the other guys was able to get ahead of you? Well, Nick, I uh, kind of just took note from the previous season as well as the earlier part of the season that uh, these races are all about being patient on, on the draft tier tracks, especially. Um, it's a battle of chess. You know, it's not necessarily a straight up... Uh, you know, pace battle as it would be maybe in like a formula car where there's less draft going on. You got to think about car position and where you are on track. And I made sure that I was taking notes throughout the race about where I could maybe get an advantage. Even coming across the line, I was like, okay, if they're behind me three tenths, I can still make it ahead in the line for the end of the race. So constant battling while also trying to keep your nose clean and consistent laps. And you did a great job. Thank you. Well, Russell, it's super cool to see so much talent here on the Tuesday Night Series running clean, putting on some great racing. I know we've been looking for that for a while with uh, been able to avoid any on-track shenanigans. So a great win, the first driver of the season to make it back-to-back. -back, and you've got the privilege, the pleasure, the final send-offs of the night. Who do you want to give a shout-out to that helps make it happen here at Road America? Absolutely, James. And we're on some positive momentum. Let's. I hope to keep it going. I'd love to give a shout out to Alex Del Torre once again for being an awesome person. Um, he was the one who actually taught me that, you know, with spec racing, it's a battle of chess, you know, so you got to be patient, got to be up there. So I, I would like to dedicate maybe this win to him, you know, and uh, shout out to my family back home watching in New Jersey. As always, they're great supporters, my friends from Michigan and New Jersey who come to watch the race. Um, the league sponsors, Superlap in particular, as well as uh, Wiltum Group. Um, Michigan Turn Marshals and Waterford Hills with their first open track day coming up 
uh, Saturday as well as the Sunday, as well as the racing school happening at the end of the month where I'll be instructing and happy to help. So, yeah, we got a great community. Um, if you're if you're watching and you're not driving, let's get on. Let's let's go race because uh, we got some fun guys out here and a great show made by Team Goon Squad. Well, thank you so much, Soto. Always a pleasure, bud. Congrats again on the massive back to back, and I'm sure we'll see you up here more throughout the season. Thanks again, guys. Congrats, bud. Thank you. Nick, that was Russell Soto bringing in the top spot, but it was still anybody's guess who was going to pick up the win here tonight. But all in all, what a fantastic race here this evening. Man, and again, the, this Detroit region race is a great group of people. The car is a great choice for this uh, series. And uh, whether it's mid-pack, back of the pack, front of the pack, we are just seeing great racing every single week. I am loving it. Couldn't say it better myself. On behalf of the Detroit SCCA Sim Series, my name has been James East with Team Goon Squad Broadcasting. Thank you all so much to the fans, friends, and family. Tune in, supporting the league, supporting the drivers, as well as supporting the broadcast. And we'll see you same time, same place next week. Say goodnight, Nick. See you next week. <laughs>